So today I'm going to talk about reality surfing and moving into new quantum possibilities and what essentially keeps us stuck in the same reality, right? How many people do you know that could be basically a living encyclopedia for every teaching about the law of attraction, the nature of reality, the quantum nature of reality? You know, they know so well how energy works, yet they're still in the same life. They still feel the same way. The people in their lives are still showing up in the exact same way. Well, the reason is simple, and that is because there has been no real shift in energy. Why is it so difficult for people to change their energy, to truly change their energy? And I'm not talking about, you know, playing a fun song and feeling kind of good and high and having a little fun for three minutes. And then as soon as the song is over, or as soon as the meditation is over, or as soon as you're not focused anymore doing work, your mind defaults back into that default mode network, that distracted mind that is wandering and, you know, cycling old hurts and defending itself and talking to itself about itself. Why is it so difficult to get out of that? Well, the reason is really two things. One is that the person has not raised their energy, their awareness out of the resting state, the familiar state, so they literally can't see what they're stuck in. And that's where disidentifying from the mind, right, cultivating, and not cultivating, but resting in awareness so that you can observe the patterns. But ob observation, as I've said many times, really isn't enough because what we actually require is the ability to feel the difference between egoic activity and right the resonance of the soul or pure consciousness even. And so how do you really know the difference? Well, some people say, well, if your body constricts, you know, you're in you know, a fear energy and if your body feels expanded, then, you know, you're in an expanded state. And that's true. However, there are certain states of energy that are a little trickier and tend to be so familiar to the mind that it's actually difficult to tell, right? Am I actually in awareness or am I spaced out? Am I actually happy and joyful or am I actually in a state of adrenaline feeling like I really need to get something done right now? Some people think that that is joy or that that is a high vibration. Some people believe that naivety is a high state of energy, right? Oh, I'll just trust everything. No matter what information I'm getting in my reality, right? That is, uh, that is unconscious female energy that is stuck in sensation, right? Without the wisdom and the direction of the male. So first, we actually have to be aware of how we actually feel in order to go beyond the restraints, right? The restraints of these thoughts and feelings, these constructs and emotional addictions, we have to be aware of them in the first place. And because people are such adept escape artists, they have a really hard time. And I have been very humbled in the work that I do with people. I have learned that a lot of people truly have no idea how they actually feel. So I would say about various things, about money, about their life, about themselves, about their body, right? A person might tell you, yeah, I'm totally fine with myself. I'm at peace with myself. But actually, you know, they might feel deeply ashamed of who they are for a number of reasons. And it's really important that they reveal to themselves that shame because if the whole, your whole ability to tune into a new reality is your ability to let go of the old reality. You can't let go of something that's not in your hand. You can't. And so if I know that there's shame in my hand, oh, then I can look at it. What is, what is the belief? What do I believe about myself or about life? Am I comparing myself to others? What can I, what can I teach myself on a somatic level that can have me truly let go of this shame? The truth is that comparing myself to others is insanity. It is futile. It makes no sense. Every flower, every species, every rock, everything in nature is uniquely itself. And nothing else compares itself to another thing. But that 
idea that I shouldn't be who I am, I shouldn't be where I am, I shouldn't look like how I look like, I shouldn't be X, Y, and Z, that is the number one thing that causes a person to remain in shame. And then because they are taught to be good, grateful little people, they hide the shame from themselves and they say, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, everything is fine. I'm really happy with myself. I'm really grateful. I'm truly grateful for everything in my life. When the reality is that, no, they're actually not. They're miserable and they're ashamed and that's okay, right? So the first step is how do I actually feel? about myself first and foremost how do i actually feel about myself if the whole universe if the universe is holographic and it is then if i am repeatedly attracting bullies into my life i must be embodying a victim consciousness i must believe that i can be attacked if i believe that i can be attacked i'm not in god consciousness knowing that the universe is a hologram, that if I embody the energy of strength and alignment and self-knowledge and, and radiance and the song of my soul, if I truly knew that, then no matter what comes at me in my external reality, it would not feel like an attack. It wouldn't feel like an attack. It would just feel like, oh, that person's saying and doing whatever they're saying and doing, and it doesn't mean anything about myself. So... How do we reality surf? Well, first, we have to become aware of where we are tethered to the known. And when I say the known, I mean the identity that we are familiar with from our childhood and other lives, right? The strategies that we have the abusive energy that we hold on to, to control and manipulate reality, to control and manipulate ourselves and other people, to get things from the external world in an unconscious way, like creating an illness. And I'm not, I don't want anybody to be ashamed or feel ashamed for creating any anything in their lives. I had cancer, I had an eating disorder, I was in an abusive marriage and I take responsibility for those things. And, you know, in my experience and in the examples that I've seen of people who have truly healed, it, it really comes down to taking radical responsibility for your role as a creator in your life. Yes, I attract people who abuse me because I embody a victim consciousness, period. And yes, there are such things as narcissists and sociopaths, etc. really. And I believe people use those terms quite loosely and in a way to feel altruistic and superior to others. But there is such thing as those pathological patterns. But once you're aware of that, right, there's no need to keep talking about it, keep making somebody wrong, unless you want to educate people to be able to spot it, which I feel like is va very valuable. But in your own life, telling the story about the narcissist, the bully, right? Whatever, whatever object you're using to enforce a sense of victim mentality, it's just there comes a point where it becomes unloving to you, right? Maybe it might be useful for a while to vent and blame, right? I wouldn't put anything in the shadow. I wouldn't say blame is always bad. That's not true. Sometimes blame is something that you need to let yourself have for a second, right? In order to really just let the energy move through you so that you can realize the deeper truth, which is that everybody plays the part they need to play to wake you up. So again, how do we surf realities? The second part, besides be being aware of how I truly feel about myself, how I truly feel about money, how I truly feel about my family, how I truly feel about where and who I am right now in my life, right? Looking at it and then questioning it, but questioning it with such an intensity and an amplitude of sincerity that you deconstruct the lie. The second part is that you want to consciously create your life every day. You want to tune into frequencies because as I said, observation isn't enough because if you're so used to adrenaline, you're not going to feel the difference between stress and excitement. It's not going to be discernible to you 
So what's required besides being the observer is also feeling love. And, you know, even if your heart isn't totally open, you can play music and relax, right? Relax your body. You can breathe and relax your body and modulate your energy so that you are in a buoyant resting state and you can be begin to become familiar with what does it really feel like to feel like all of my needs are met. Oh, it feels buoyant. It feels comfort. It feels, it's like I'm being held by the universe because really everything comes down to, do I believe, do I live in a loving universe? Does God love me? And yes, I am that, right? But even though we are fundamentally source, that's the fundamental truth. We are still having the experience of an individual and at a psychological level, it's important to ask from that individual psychological level, do you as an individual feel like the universe loves you? When you feel a pain in your body, do you restrict and get scared? Or do you tell yourself, thank you body, I feel you adjusting to something that you need to adjust to. I feel you adapting. Right? The difference between those two things is the difference between believing that God is a punishing God and God is a loving God, right? Because if I live in a friendly, loving universe, then everything in my life is a gift, is an adaptation to help me somehow, right? So when you feel strange things in your body, say, thank you. Thank you. I feel you adjusting. And in that quiet clarity, right, if you want to go get it checked out, go get it checked out in a sense of calm and know that whatever it truly is, you can, you can handle it. I tell, I tell a lot of people that the thought of something is often so much worse than the reality. I, I remember being in a hospital having cancer and being in the experience, I realized it, within the surgery, within, you know, interacting with the nurses and the all the different parts of it i was like wow the reality is actually much kinder than my fear that i had about this the whole time the people are actually quite lovely every healer that i know every doctor and nurse you know regardless of whether you agree with the medical system which i really don't i don't believe that that is a sufficient education in terms of understanding the body but the truth is that a little girl or boy that dreams of being a doctor their whole life is a healer and they have an intention to help and so just see the way that you think of something is an indicator of what do you fundamentally believe life is do you believe life is love or do you believe life is punishment this is evident in the echoes of the dialogues you have with yourself do you feel attacked or do you feel loved so when we tune into frequencies, when we relax, right? When we meditate, we play music to enhance a feeling. The more we enhance our awareness of the feeling of love, love, joy, freedom, use, I often tell people use visualizations like ascend really quickly up, up into the ethers, up into the column of light as a radiant star bright being and fly through the universe if you want to practice feeling free. Put giant wings on the back of you and walk through your neighborhood with an empowering song and feel free. The more you, you are consciously aware of the feeling of love and freedom, the more not love and freedom will be evident to you so that you can let it go. Because if I am full of adrenaline my whole life, and it's so familiar to me that I actually mistake it for inspiration or for excitement, if I meditate and I somatically familiarize my body with the feeling of ease, then when my body starts to produce adrenaline, I'll see it right now in this moment when my body is full of adrenaline, I am connected to the past, to the known. I am thinking a thought, I am assuming something that is filling my body with adrenaline. I am getting feedback of, of a thought I am holding in my mind. Ask in that moment, in that moment, with an amplitude of sincerity, what do I believe about myself or about life that is filling me with the sense of dread, with the sense of adrenaline? Then question it. Is it true? 
is it true? Is it true that I'm not safe right now? Is it true that there's only evidence that I'm a failure in, in my life? Could it be that I just don't give any, any attention to what's going right in my life because I'm always in a survival energy? So in order to reality surf, we must become aware, become acutely aware of how we really feel. We must practice feeling higher energies so that instead of only having the past as a reference, we have what we choose as a reference. And I don't want to call that the future. I want to call that the quantum field because all energies are here and now. And where are you putting your attention, right? Are, is your attention defaulting into looping into the known? Is your mind wandering all day? Be real with yourself. Is your mind wandering all day? Do you numb out a lot on social media or whatever all day? Every once in a while, you know, it's okay. Everything in moderation. <laughs> but if you are chronically mind wandering, if you are chronically numbed out, chances are you're avoiding a feeling. So if, if your mind is just going nonstop in a moment, blah, 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 right? What's happening is that there's a vibration vibrating below the neck, probably in the belly, probably in the solar plexus. And if left unattended and unwitnessed, it rises up into the mind and becomes dialogue. So if I have dialogue in my mind, incessant dialogue in my mind, right? I wanna drop into the body and find what am I avoiding? If you just have the intention to be aware of what you are avoiding in every moment of distraction, your life, you would liberate so much energy. You would have so much more bandwidth available to you, so much more joy available to you. It would be shocking. But again, because people are so adept at escape, it's very hard to get them to actually make the choice to do these things. So we have to be aware we have to be aware of when we are distracting ourselves to go into somatically the cause. What am I avoiding? When you drop into whatever it is you are avoiding, there's really a few things you can do. One is just sit so intensely presently with the energy in a loving way, open your body and, and breathe, and it may very well dissolve. It may tell you the construct that you have in your mind that generated the energy, which is amazing. Sometimes you can just dissolve energy by sitting with it. Sometimes you need to be aware of the construct for some reason, and then you question it and then you deconstruct it. So yes, the truth is that we live in a quantum universe and that there is no real need to heal. But why is it that when we do healing work, it feels like there is an actual person with a consistent theme that we seem to be healing all the time, right? The same issue comes up over and over again because we are a representation of the collective consciousness and we are healing issues that are not personal to us, right? That is, that is our gift to the universe. But we don't have to heal in the sense that we are broken we have to figure out how to liberate our creative energy and bring it back into our heart and untether it from the known. So really it's two things, being aware in a moment and also every single day, every single day, not only in a morning routine, not only in a meditation, but all day long when you're walking to lunch, when you're driving, is your mind wandering or are you focusing on a frequency? Are you in joy? And in the moment that you are in joy, become consciously aware of it. Don't just, you know, there, there is value of like putting on music and ecstatic dance and being totally mindless, right? And just losing it and moving energy, that's okay. But then if that ends and then you go back into mind wandering, really what I would suggest is to cultivate the habit of being consciously aware of how I am directing my energy. So when I am driving my car to the grocery store, I'm gonna train my awareness to drop into my heart and I'm going to expand my energy out and I'm going to appreciate the sunshine and I'm going to feel it hitting my face and I'm going to use my senses. And in that moment, I am going to be consciously aware that 
I'm, I'm being a creator right now. Why do you want to be consciously aware of it? Because if you're consciously aware that you're the creator, what you're telling your subconscious is, I'm not afraid. I'm the creator. I'm not a victim of life. I'm the creator. And the, in the more moments that you are consciously aware that you are creator, the more those subconscious tethers just tend to disappear and become irrelevant. And that doesn't mean that we cease to have challenges in life. But I would say that the challenges get a lot easier to navigate. Um, it doesn't mean that we never suffer. In fact, I believe that an enlightened being feels more pain. However, they maybe don't suffer because they don't tell stories about reality, but they also don't censor or escape pain. That censoring mechanism dissolves. And so you're completely present with life, but you don't need to tell a story about it because you're just with it in the moment. So the way that you tune into new realities is that you need to be able to have the bandwidth, the focus to direct your attention. And just like Yogananda said, yes, we do create our reality, but most people's bandwidth is stuck in mind wandering. Blah, 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 mind wandering, distraction, just completely defaulting into the default mode network where nothing is happening, right? Nothing, nothing creative can truly happen. And that's not 100% true because creation is always happening no matter what. But if you're looping the same conversations and the same issues in your mind constantly, you're in the same energy and you're attracting the same aspects from the same people in your life. So become aware of, of, of how you really feel in the moment. Cease to tell stories, unloving stories about reality, about the government, about your ex-husband, about somebody who deceived or hurt you. That story builds a psychic bridge <laughs> to the known. And why would you do that? Why would you keep doing that to yourself? Right? It's not kind to yourself. So to sum it up, stop escaping reality. Be acutely aware of how you feel so that you can dismantle the constructs that keep you tethered to the past. Every day, not only in the morning, not only right before you go to sleep, put yourself to sleep consciously, right? Put yourself in a, in a comfortable, easeful state of energy, right? In a sense of being kind to myself. I'm not just gonna unconsciously fall asleep. I'm going to create a beautiful healing environment, a beautiful, buoyant, um, happy feeling environment that I can blissfully drift off into, not only the morning and the night, but throughout your day, right? If honestly your mind is wandering and defaulting into arguing with itself, arguing with other people, explaining yourself, defending yourself, justifying yourself, justifying your existence, use your healthy male energy and direct yourself more. Focus on a frequency more. Don't waste your precious life force looping in the node.